please welcome Colonel Jill Morgenthaler. By the way, that's army talk for hello, hua. So before I ever became a colonel and commanded people from 17 different nations, I had to be able to develop a strong team. And fortunately, I learned that lesson when I was 21. How many of you have been 21? <laughs> oh, good, good. You're with me then. <laughs> Wonderful. So march back with me to 1975. That's when I was 21. And you can see me up here in the far corner. In 1975, the United States Army decided to have an experiment and actually see if women could work with men in the military and could women actually lead men. So when they opened up that experiment, I raised my hand because I wanted to be just like my father, a Marine officer. And I just thought that was so cool. I can be like my dad. Well, that summer, 1975, it was time for me to go off to boot camp and see if women could actually lead men. I'm packing my bags. I'm humming. I have this. I can do this. I mean, what's it like? Girl Scout camp? Boot camp? Mm, a little more testosterone? I got this. Well, my father saw me packing, and he looked at me, and he realized, oh my gosh. She's clueless. She has no idea what's coming after her. So he came in to me and he said, Jill, they don't want you. What do you mean they don't want me? They're going to try and break you down, make you cry, and get you to go quit. Why? Because to a lot of men, the women serving in the military means we will have a sissy military, a weak military, a girly military, and the Soviets will be victorious. All because you're coming, they're out for you. And I looked at him and I said, but then what do I do? God has given you gifts. You use your gifts and you never quit. Okay. So I marched off to boot camp, and my father was right. There were 50,000 men and 83 women. So obviously, most of the units did not have any women. And the units that were all men, when they would see me with all my guys, they'd be like, you've got a girl. You're going to fail. Well, I learned something different that day. We were facing an obstacle one day. And this obstacle, we didn't know what it was. We were in the staging area, but every team of man, men came back and they're like, we failed. Each team, we failed. And we're like, oh my gosh, what's this obstacle? What are they facing? All these men are failing. Well, when it was our turn, we go jogging up and we are stunned by this obstacle. It is a 3.5 meter high wall of barbed wire tear your flesh and clothes barbed wire. And your objective was to get beyond it to point B, but the barbed wire wasn't enough. Oh, no, no, no. The ground was painted yellow. It was contaminated. So if somehow you got around over under the barbed wire, but you touched the yellow, you're dead. The team flunks. And the Army gave us just two tools. One was a rope above the barbed wire, and one was a plank of wood beyond the yellow. We looked at it, and then one guy on my team, he got it. Muskorsky, big guy, he looked at it, he looked at each one of us, and he said, okay, I'm the big guy. I'm going to throw myself on the body, on the barbed wire. Morgan Thaler, you're the little guy, and you run really fast. <laughs> you're going to run up my body, grab that rope, swing, make it beyond the yellow, throw me that plank of wood, I'll lay it on the barbed wire, and the men will all run up, swing, do it. Yes? And I said, no. <laughs> Are you nuts? That's not right, me running on your body. And he said, well, some other man runs on my body. I'm not getting out of the barbed wire. <laughs> do you want to quit? Do you want to fail? No. 
So as soon as he laid on the barbed wire, I ran as fast as I could. I swung, just like Jane in a Tarzan movie. I made it beyond the yellow. The adrenaline is pumping. I picked up that plank of wood. I threw it. He caught it. He laid it on the barbed wire. Everybody swang. They did it. We passed. And then the officer in charge came up to us and said, you just broke the 25-year record on that barbed wire. The team with a girl. <laughs> we did it. We passed. And that day I learned there's a reason for the big guy and there's the reason for the little guy. And that's how you develop great teams. As Einstein so brilliantly said, everybody's a genius. Everybody's a genius. But if you judge a fish by how it climbs a tree, it will spend its life believing it's stupid. We all have gifts. But what your purpose is, is to find the gifts that other people have, that you don't have, because we don't have everything. We have you. We don't need more of you on a team. What we need are the people who have strengths that are your weaknesses. And that's what a leader does to create a great dynamic team that will go further than you ever dreamed of. You find people who are different. You don't look at gender. You don't look at race. You don't look at nationality. You don't look at tribe. You hire to your weakness. And with that, inshallah, you will go further than you ever dreamed of. Whoa.